My Hero Academia should be a good show. It has a great premise, fun characters, a world where you can make any superpower possible. It's the bastion of the next generation of shonen anime. So, why doesn't anyone like it? The show's been diminishing in popularity for a while now, at least in the larger public conscience. A couple lackluster arcs have allowed other shonen anime to pass it up, with most people viewing it as the Weenie Hut Juniors of the genre. When most reviewers talk about why My Hero is mid, it generally goes like this. It's bad because it's been poorly executed. It has a good concept, the first couple seasons were good, but lately the arcs have just been mid. And that's not wrong per se, but I feel like it's the safe answer that doesn't really get the full picture. There are a lot of things this show does great. My Hero Academia should be really, really good. So why isn't it? So before we get all negative talking about all the shortcomings this show has to offer, why do I think that My Hero should be really, really good? I genuinely think that the character designs are one of the best elements of the show. Say what you want, but I recognize these silhouettes. Iconic, unique, eye-catching, memorable, and it's not like they skimped out on quantity either. One of my favorite things to do when watching is to just pause on a frame where there's a bunch of background characters. Like, whoa, what is this guy's deal? The superpowers aspect of it is also very cool. The fact that quirks can be anything from the mundane to the busted to the actively life-ruining to have is a very interesting thing, and there's a lot you can do with it. And the music comes. Come on, I better not catch any one of you saying this ain't goaded. The only reason some of you are saying it's overrated is because it was made in 2016. Give it a couple more years and you say Run will be cool again. But I think the biggest thing going for the show is the generational aspect of it. It's the only core idea of my hero that I really enjoy. Generational trauma, expectations, family dynamics. The current heroes are more than just something for the kids to look up to, they're people, with their own childlike problems that they push onto the new kids. Another big thing people like to tout about this show is the fact that it breaks shonen conventions, how it goes out of its way to do things in a manner that no other shonen has. And I think that that is a bit hit or miss. Ugh, I, I think now we're fully out of the positive section, especially since we're about to talk about the care. The characters in this show are a mixed bag. Some of them are really great and interesting and dynamic. Some of them show a lot of promise, and some of them are. Who the fuck is this black person in my lobby? You better change that skin now. Hey, Darky! I'm talking to you! Deku is a boring protagonist. Looking at modern shonen anime, we've kind of moved away from goody-goody protagonists, and that's because, yeah, they're kind of lame. Deku never really does anything that the audience doesn't expect. He works hard, fights hard, makes friends, is a minor and neurodivergent and non-binary. Deku's whole problem as a character is that he just doesn't have growth. His power grows, his body does, but his character, like, like, what are Deku's actual character arcs? When a character is already perfectly kind, good-spirited, and trusting, all of the work for developing that character is pushed onto the situations you put them in. How do you challenge that kindness? What new obstacles can you put in the way of a character that just wants to be nice? And this can work for a time, but there are a lot of ways it just falls flat once you introduce other variables, like other, more interesting characters. Like Bak- Who I would ship, ship with in My Hero Academia would be Bakugo. Kachan, I couldn't let you die! The person who I would ship in, in My Hero Academia, would have to be Deku. Oh, uh, Deku! Bakugo really shows promise as a character. He is the Vegeta, so he's hot-headed, envious, with major pride and superiority complex problems. But, this show goes far out of its way to show you that he is not stupid. He has good grades, great ingenuity with his power, he's a strategist. He is where he is because, partly, he's earned it. So his entire arc revolves around him dealing with not being the best, strongest, most awesomest superhero ever. And that is pretty interesting. But after a certain point of watching my hero, and I don't know if anyone else felt this while watching, Bakugo starts to become kinda static. And it's right around the time where he really started interacting with Deku a lot. These two are foils, characters who are close but opposites, and through their interaction, develop each other in new and interesting ways. The problem with these two is that Bakugo doesn't develop Deku, because again, 
His character has nowhere to go. And because Deku's character never goes anywhere, Bakugo's foil with him stunts Bakugo from going too far either. It creates this weird cap where Bakugo can't meaningfully develop any further because Deku is just staying in one spot. Bakugo could be this very cool and deep character if Deku wasn't such a lame bouncing pad. Like, what if, just like one time, Deku got like seriously, genuinely mad at someone, right? Like, that immediately reflects on Deku, but then let's introduce Bakugo. There are so many ways you can take that. How does Bakugo react? Does he like this side of Deku or not? How much of Deku's reaction is because of Bakugo? What if Bakugo didn't like seeing what Deku did and is now reflecting on himself in a new way? And all of that is just scratching the surface of the event where one time Deku is mad at somebody. One time where he's not perfect, but apparently that's too much to fucking ask for. Ugh. Anyway, here's another bland-ass main character. Oh, then what the fuck is stopping us from just throwing ourselves off a bridge and giving up and saying, yeah, the planet is dying, the government hates us, the animals are leaving. Like Bakugo, she had a lot of promise, especially during season two when we got to see her fight for herself and her family and what she believes in. And Deku, uh, okay, you know what? Th that that's fine. You know, she can have that trait as long as it doesn't become the single defining element of her entire character. Son of a bitch! Yeah, Ochako really gets sidelined as the story goes on, only ever being brought back to do something that at the end of the day is about Deku. She is mostly a symptom of two problems. One, My Hero Academia generally shelves its female characters. If you want to learn more about that, go watch this video about how why, yes, My Hero is sexist. And two, the larger problem with all the superhero kids, there's too damn many of them. 20 characters in class A, 20 more in class B, also third years, and there's other classes, and there's other schools! Who are you, people? Even in just class A, 20 characters is just too much. Everyone's development becomes cramped as you desperately try to have arcs for all of them. You end up with less time to give any characters the spotlight, and I end up with less time to care about them. 10 characters in class A, that's it. Maybe 12 if you're good. All those interesting concepts we see in like five characters can be extended to the rest of the class instead of just a bunch of distilled, surface level, random fucking arcs. Nobody cares about this entire arc, there's 40 characters! There's just not enough space in the episode or my brain to process all of it. Class B gets relegated to basically just five characters and a bunch of floating heads. Same thing, 10 characters, maybe 12. I actually put some of the cut class A people in here, I, I like some of these guys. This problem gets extended to every single character, even the good ones, because the time we could have spent with Froppy or Mina or Kirishima is instead spent with Sugar Guy and Animal Guy and Tail Guy. Fucking Tail Guy! The best way I can display why a smaller cast makes better characters is in this show, with the vi- Over the course of the whole show, there have probably been just as many villains that matter as heroes that matter. The difference is that villains are allowed to die, and thus they get cycled out a lot more. This allows the standout characters to be standouts, and it allows the non-standouts to close the door on their way out. And the standouts are good. Quirks make for very interesting antagonists. Let's go down the list. Shigaraki, pretty great overall, especially as you get further into the show. He would be better if he had a better foil, but whatever. Toga, I can fix her. She's alright, you know, she would also be better if she had better foils, for sure. Kurogiri, very cool ability. Would be better if we spent more time with your foils, huh. You got benched because you're trans. You got benched because your power is hard to balance. You- I forgot that you aren't dead, but you know, you look cool, so whatever. If only you had, like a- like a foil. My Hero Academia is a great example of why foils are important. You can only see so much of a character when they aren't being contrasted with effectively, or if you spend too much time on characters that don't fucking matter. Even though the main villains are a mixed bag, I can for sure remember more villains from the show than heroes, because they're more likely to stand out, they have a place in the story, and they know when to leave. So far, I've only been talking about characters and concepts. Let's look at what actually happens. The fights. The a-
the quality of the action reaches, in my opinion, really high highs, especially in the earlier seasons. The lack of power creep, the animation, the interesting quirk dynamics, overall a My Hero Academia W. I do have some issues though, and if I had to choose one word to describe it, it would be weightlessness. Like certain parts of it just don't have any weight. Like how injuries just don't matter, like at all ever. Look, I'm all for pushing past pain to achieve your goals, like it was cool the first couple times, but with every punch from Deku's purple arms, the fact that he has purple arms matters less and less. It becomes a joke, like every character is just recreating that one Caleb City bit. No! It completely shattered the bones in my leg! Okay. But one real complaint that I have about the action in the show is the use or non-use of space. Almost every fight is done in some empty void, and that can work, that can work a lot. Especially as power scales up, you gotta clear the field. But if we're inside a building, or we're on some weird terrain, you gotta use it a little bit. Without it, you end up with the fights in My Hero, sailing across endless concrete walls, building rubble, and purple tubes. Anime flashbacks. I'm already not a fan of anime flashbacks in general. All it does is show us what the characters are thinking and referring back to like we can't figure that out ourselves. As if psychoanalyzing characters isn't half the fun of watching a show. Maybe I'm just a nerd, I don't know. But my hero, dude. This isn't just regular anime flashbacks. This is flashback abuse. Flashing back to the same thing three times in one episode. Flashing back to something that happened that was said 20 seconds ago. Entire episodes dedicated to flashbacks. I genuinely think this hurts the longevity of My Hero Academia. It is the epitome of telling and not showing. It can work occasionally, but My Hero just spams this horrible move over and over and over, man. I could go on about the small miscellaneous problems I have with the action, but my last major problem with it is actually the next major problem that I have with the show. The t I think she's maybe gonna go there, right? My Hero Academia has major tone problems, and these problems all come in different forms that seem disparate but all come together to form the one big tone problem. The most immediate and basic of these problems is setting and framing, specifically during big ol' serious fights in seasons 4 and 6. You have these big, serious, dramatic moments with so much on the line and so much tragedy all around, and they're framed and placed in these sunny, saturated environments with emphasis on all the big punches. And again, this approach can work, I mean, My Hero shows us this in the earlier seasons. These big bright punches one way or another are earned. But now, after giving us so much dramatic shit and having done big punches plenty of times already, it doesn't feel earned or, or like in the right place at all. When I say it isn't earned, what I mean is that the show introduces these big story or action elements that are supposed to shake up everything, but it doesn't use or explore those elements enough to make them matter. Like, as a concept, let's look at large-scale death. There are so many times where we see whole shots of destroyed cities with all the rubble and buildings, but the show rarely likes to go past the surface of what that means. They talk about casualties, you know, heroes make serious remarks about how sometimes people die, but they don't really explore it much further than that. Other modern superhero shows go to much further lengths to show the human impact of a guy being flung through seven buildings. So when you destroy a city or two with giant explosions, show us what that means for the people of this world, because right now it looks like you don't even care. This is a more specific example with flashback abuse, but at one point during a fight, Ida, the fast legs guy, is doing an attack, and during this attack, he has a flashback about how he pulled out the mufflers from his feet, which is a thing that his family does as a rite of passage? What? That's so cool! What? There's so much here! Family dynamics, quirk complications, the pain needed to succeed, this is such an awesome element! Why is it only being explored by telling us about it for 30 seconds in a flashback?! <coughs> 
Uh, beyond that, sometimes I feel like my hero doesn't know whether it's a Saturday morning cartoon or a dramatic dark modern shonen. In my hero, instead of limbs being destroyed or torn off, they turn a different color. Instead of people being blown up or injured by explosions, they get pushed back. Now, this isn't really a problem on its own, it's just a facet of a non-mature rating. But it becomes a problem when you introduce really serious elements to your show, like the brutal fucking backstories or the horrible things happening to certain characters, and you put that right next to the harmless explosions and anime bandages of Kitty My Hero Academia. These two screenshots are three minutes apart in the same episode. It's just awkward and weird. These dramatic shifts in tone are the reasons why a lot of people don't think My Hero takes itself seriously. You lay this out on paper, you're like, this is pretty traumatic. Why does it not feel like it's that serious, you yeah, know? Yeah, right? everyone's wearing like a mattress around them at all times, right? Like, oh, <laughs> yeah. oh, you bounced around? You know what I mean? Like, it always feels very Everyone's safe. wearing a helmet. You're like, oh, yeah, that's just, that's just a thing that oh, happened this fast. Oh, Todoroki, oh, poor Todoroki. Uh, I suppose Vaseline on yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> All these tragic backstories with all their weight and coolness and intrigue feel like a different show because of how the rest is presented. I talked before about how all of these problems I have come together to form one big problem. And I do believe almost all of My Hero Academia's problems can be summed up with the idea that Plus Ultra is boring. Plus Ultra is the defining mantra of this show, going beyond 100% of what you think you can do. This is boring. It is the dismantled essence of lazy action writing. If a character is in some kind of struggle, instead of overcoming it through some new power or smart thinking or cunning or even overcoming an emotional arc, all the characters have to do is go fight, hit harder, punch again. That's not to say that this show doesn't do interesting things ever, but the idea of Plus Ultra allows any character at any time to bypass interesting writing and win by just keep going. It doesn't add anything, it just takes away from what could be more interesting and what could add to the longevity of My Hero's impact as a show. Why does Ida pull out his mufflers in a flashback? Because he has to unexpectedly go beyond in this moment. Why does Rabbit Girl push through eight, eight stab, stab wounds, wounds, multiple of which are in her leg, in order to kick with said leg? Because she's going beyond. Why is Deku's only growth having a bigger punch? because he's going beyond, and going beyond is all he has to do, because this is My Hero Academia. Oh, but you see, this time, Deku's arm is purpler. I'm treating Plus Ultra like it's a core aspect of the show, so it affects everything I've talked about. Characters are more likely to have uninteresting arcs, the action has more excuses to be lame, and the tone suffers for all the reasons I just talked about with Plus Ultra at its center. The source of almost all of these problems is just Plus Ultra, or that like idea of Plus Ultra, this simplification of story and events in order to meet that inspiring moniker. Does that make sense? Uh, but wait, you said this show should be really good. If Plus Ultra is really such a horrible, awful, base idea, then what about all the good that My Hero has to offer? Didn't you say the base concepts were good? Uh. Listen, in this video, I've said this phrase a lot, and this can work for a time. This approach can work, and that can work. That can work a lot. It can work occasionally. And that's because in the beginning of My Hero, most of these problems weren't problems. All the elements of the show were built around Plus Ultra. The characters, the world, the events, everything felt in its place. But as the season count grew and the idea of Plus Ultra didn't. And this is all not even to mention the, uh, political implications. Man, all these criminals sure do hate peace, and that's all there is to them. These criminals, we gotta, we gotta lock up these criminals. I had a whole segment about My Hero's messaging and political implications, and how that's a reason why some people don't like the show. However, My Hero it isn't over, you know? It's not Jilver, you know, maybe maybe it can turn around. All I'm gonna say is that UA is Cop City Atlanta. 
look it up. My whole thing with My Hero is that there are a lot of amazing elements, but it's done a bad job at handling the growth of all of these elements. It just keeps saying plus ultra. This and the other smaller mistakes it's made have curbed its ability to have a lasting impact as a show. These base problems are baked into My Hero, and they cause problems when any given episode or arc isn't doing something outstanding. When you don't have great villains, when the action's only okay, or when some payoff is a bit underwhelming, you lose people. And all we can do is hope it doesn't continue to do that. And if you don't agree, leave a comment. Tell me why my hero is actually terrible or amazing. Go ahead. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Boost my analytics. Do it. 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 Do it